morning, Mrs. Russell. Arthur, dear, breakfast. Coming, darling. How are you this morning? Well, I could have done with a little more sleep, but Ace would keep barking so. Oh, he's only trying to be a good house dog. Yes, yes, I suppose he is. Vanilla! Vanilla! The blood vessels and glands of the head, neck and eyes are supplied from the thoracic segments. Wrong, Terry. From the connector cells in the first and second segments. Of course, yes. Breakfast, children, you must have it. Coming, Mother. Just doing some homework. It's a big day. Lecture and exam. Yes, I know, dear. But don't get so agitated. <laughs> connector cells, stupid. Connector cells. I know, I know. I didn't sound like it just now. Yes. Oh. I've had a complaint about you. I hear you've been creating a disturbance. You mustn't do that, you know. Sylvia doesn't like it. Do come along, children. You really should take up medicine, then. You'd make a good teacher. Daddy seems very worried this morning about his exam. Oh? Here's your tea, darling. Oh, thank you. Sausage or kipper, vanilla? Coffee, please, Daddy, and just a little bit of toast. You ought to have more than that, my dear. A growing girl like you should have a good appetite. What about you, Father? I've stopped growing. But only recently, Arthur. <laughs> Don't forget I'm coming with you, Father. What time does 8.33 leave? Curiously enough, 8.33. Isn't it ever late? Often. Oh, the chances are to be on time this morning. I expect the engine driver knows about your exam. I'm sure he knows more about it than I do. Well, you'll get through all right, Teddy. I've willed you to. Whenever Mother rubs Marmaduke, I know she's making a wish. What are you wishing for now, Mother? If I told you, it wouldn't come true. Would it, Arthur? I don't believe in wishes or superstitions. No, of course you don't, dear. You're much too practical and efficient. I say, hurry up, Terry. We should be late. Right, Father. I'll be with you. See you tonight, dears. Yes, Daddy. Anything you want from town, Sylvia? No, dear, I don't think so. Oh, yes, the library book. Do you remember the West? Oh, yes, of course, the West. I'll collect it at lunchtime. Your flower holder, Daddy. Oh, thanks, sir. Bye, Mother. I hope Marmaduke doesn't let me down. I'll be with you, Terry, and you're going to pass. Thank you. Ten, this is your day for the Academy, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is, Terry. Oh, good, then you'll be coming home with me. Uh, well, I did have one or two things I rather wanted to do. That's all right. I'll wait for you. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Good luck. Hello, Ace. How was the sausage? He adores that dog, doesn't he? Yes. His dog and his roses. That sums up your father's world. Still, they're harmless enough, I suppose. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Yes, Russell? I hope you won't think it presumptuous of me, but, well, that was a wonderful job. Thank you. I trust the patient will agree with you. Oh, I'm sure he will. But, you know, sir, although I work fairly hard, I, I sometimes wonder if I shall ever be able to do anything like that. Of course you will. It's only a matter of experience. But you can't hurry these things. No, sir. But uh, the next step's a bit of a pill. Your final? Yes. Oh, I shouldn't worry too much about that. I think perhaps you'll scrape through. Thank you, sir. Terry, how's he go? Oh, not bad, Sally. I, uh, I think perhaps the surgeon knows a little more about his job now. Well, now you've nearly finished your exams, do you think you'll have some time for other things? Well, for instance? Oh, the theatre, concerts, movies. Oh. There's a wonderful film in Leicester Square. I'm sorry, Sally. I have to meet Fenella and take her home. Oh. Hello, Sally. How's he treating you? Passionately. Uh. Look, Casanova, I have a message for you from Fenella. She will not be going home with you this evening. No? No. Hmm. Well, uh, what time will she be coming home with you? Oh, uh, just after the movies, I imagine. I'll be driving her home. Uh, well, uh, cheer. Bye-bye, Sal. Well, that takes care of Fenella. Look, Sally, I'm terribly sorry, but I don't feel in the mood for pictures or music or anything. I, I've got too much on my mind. You, uh, you do understand, don't you? No.
pas mauvais du tout. Quite good. Very good. Oh, thank you, hmm. Professor. Mais il faut encore travailler. Exercice pratique, plenty of practice. And don't waste too much time. Thank you, Monsieur Le Plenty of practice, Miss Russell. Exercise, practice, mm, like that. <laughs> would you like to play it again for me? Please, not now. Let's go. Movies? Hmm? What would you like to see? You. Hmm? What would you like to see? You. Good. Hmm. Hello, Mr. Boy. Come on in. Oh, I say, Arthur, the garden's looking very well this year. Not too bad, is it? How do you do it? Little work, little worry, lot of fertilizer. What? Well, you seem to be having luck keeping the mildew off the flowers. I use an arsenic solution. Oh. Mind you, you've got to keep at it the whole time. Oh, it's a lot of work. Oh, it's worth it. Of course, these are just ordinary flowers to use for the house. Come over here. I'll show you something really fine. Now, this is something to feast your eyes on. There you are. My Princess Elizabeths. Aren't they wonderful? They are beautiful. Mind if I take one home to the wife? Uh, uh, sorry, not those. <laughs> Help yourself in the garden. I see. You mark my words, I should get a purse for those. I'm awfully sorry, old chap, but you know how it is. One never cuts prize roses. I understand. How are you, my dear? You're very late, aren't you? Oh, just a little. Mason and I have been discussing politics and flowers. Do you remember my book? There you are. Arthur, whatever made you bring that? Oh, sorry, that's the one you asked for. No, dear. West? West? Certainly one of Miss West's new book. Rebecca West, not Sackville West. Oh, sure, I, I seem to remember. Seem to remember. Poor dear with his memory. <laughs> oh, never mind, Arthur. We all make mistakes. I, I wrote it down somewhere. I could have sworn this was the one you wanted. It doesn't matter. I've got plenty to do in this house without reading. It's a disappointment, of course, but... I can take it back tomorrow. <laughs> I shouldn't dream of troubling you. Well, did you have a nice day? Oh, rather trying. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Nothing to interest you. It's just the petty little annoyances inseparable from housekeeping. Trying to cover up other people's mistakes. Having to do most of the work myself. You ought to get out more. Take Ace for a walk now and again. He's a good one to take your mind off your worries. Mm. Well, now, how about a nice glass of sherry? What? On a hot day like this? I can never understand the Spaniards drinking the dreadful stuff. Is it this or a warm? Hello, darling. Hello. Hello, Terry. Well, tell us the news. Oh, um, Barclay, the chief surgeon, thinks perhaps I'll scrape through. Fine, fine. When will you know definitely? A month or two. Dr. Terence Russ. Steady, don't steady. Where's Vanilla? Oh, uh, she had to see her doctor. What? What doctor? Her doctor. What's wrong with her? Nothing, Dad. She, uh, she's just growing up. That's all. What are you talking about? Dr. Valentine Christie. Nice chap. He's a biochemist at the hospital. We call him the brutish gentleman. Do you mean to say that for I mean that she's gone to the pictures with a man, Mother. Why get excited about that? But she never said anything to me. Well, up to now, I don't think there's been anything to say. Now, just a minute, Terry. What sort of a man is this, Dr. Christie? Ah, oh, splendid fellow, Dad. He's helped me a lot. You introduced him to Vanilla? Why, yes. Yes, I think I did. How far has it gone? Oh, just to a cinema. Somewhere in Leicester Square, I think. It's so unlike Vanilla. I shouldn't worry, Mother. After all, I used to take you to the theatre. <laughs> oh, that everlasting noise. It's only Ace asking for his evening stroll. I promised him I'd... Perhaps I'd better take him. <laughs> Excuse me, Madam. Could I have a word with you? What about? It's about my Effie. I've taken the liberty of asking her to come along later. I hope you'll see her. So you're really leaving me after all? Well... 
If I'd only myself to please, it would be different, but it's my husband. You see, Mum, he's worked himself out as a plumber. But just because he's going to open a shop, there's no reason for you to leave me, especially after all these years. He couldn't manage by himself, not the long hours. Hasn't missed being with you, madam. I've told Effie as much. Did you? It was very kind. Very well, Mrs. Holmes. I'll try to find time to see her. Thank you. Good evening, Mrs. Holmes. Oh, good evening, Miss. Hello, Mummy. Hello, darling. Mummy, I want you to meet a friend of Terry's and mine, Dr. Christie. How do you do, Dr. Christie? Good evening, Mrs. Russell. Fenella said it was okay for me to come. I hope you don't mind. Why, no, of course not. Children's friends are always welcome here. Val is at the oh. hospital. Terry introduced us. Yes, I know, dear. Terry told me all about him. Oh, did he? Yes. Do come and sit down, Dr. Christie. I want to hear all about this film. How was it? Oh, wonderful. Terrible. Seems to be a slight clash of opinion. Mm. You both saw the same film, I presume? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. We were together. Uh, Why didn't you like it, Doctor? Oh, I uh, couldn't sort of uh, seem to get interested in it. I see. Then what did you find so wonderful about it, Fenella? Oh, it was uh, very colourful and... Mm? And the music was good. Ah. Mm. Your tastes obviously vary. What was the story about? Well, uh, Love? Yes, the, uh, the usual subject. But the way it worked out was rather silly, wasn't it, Fen? Oh, yes, it was a bit gibberish. Mm. You seem to have had a very jolly time. <laughs> uh, well, uh, would you like to stay and have a bite with us, Doctor? Val, if I may call you Val. Well, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Russell. I'd be delighted. Good. And I'll just have a few words with Mrs. Holmes. Darling. Fancy thinking I could be close to you and know what the film was about. <laughs> well. Yes? I wish. What? Does it sound careless? I wish just this evening we could have been alone together somehow, somewhere. Oh. Mother's wonderful, but... But what? She watches. Even when you're not looking, you can feel her eyes on you. As though she was x-raying your mind. Did you feel that? Well, she did make me feel a bit guilty. My darling, of what? I don't know. <laughs> All those questions. I think she just lives for us, Jerry and me. Do you think she'll be hurt because I love you so terribly? What difference can it make? You can't share love without it making a difference. Darling, I don't expect you to stop loving your family. I know. Oh, well, I don't care. I know I'm selfish, but I don't care about anyone or anything but you, Miss Mount. Mummy, Val has asked me to marry him. That's why the film was gibberish. We didn't care. We couldn't care. I've never been so happy in my life. And you? Wonderfully happy. Mum, if you'd like to see her now. Tell her to come in. Come in, dear. Don't be shy. This is my girl, Mum. Be a load off my mind to see her settle, Mum. Well, Effie, our mother thinks it's time you started working. Do you? Oh, yes, madam. Come over here by the window. Take off your hat and coat. Let me have a look at you. You're very young. Yes, ma'am. Soon 18, madam. Hmm. 
raw material. You're strong, aren't you? Yes, madam. Well, that's good. A house like this needs a lot of hard work. You sure you're up to it? I'm sure I am if Ma is. Your mother's had many years of experience in service, Effie. You haven't had any, have you? No, madam. No experience of any sort? Have you, Effie? Not really, madam. You do tell the truth, don't you? Oh, yes, madam. Very well. I'll give you a trial. Thank you, madam. You, uh, got a lot to learn, Effie. Ma says she'll teach me. I shall teach you. Thank you, madam. Tell your mother you can start tomorrow. Thank you, madam. You're forgetting your hat. Oh. Goodbye, madam. these in the lounge, would yes, you? Yes, ma'am. Aren't they lovely? You look very nice tonight, Effie. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for the dress. Good. Arthur, dear, you know I don't like the dog upstairs. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. It was my fault. I thought it wouldn't matter today. Is Terry home yet? No, but he'll be here presently. He telephoned? No, Val did. He's driving him down. Oh, did he say if Terry had passed? No. But he feels quite certain that he will. Of course he will. Now then, how about you and me having a quick one, Mother? All right, Arthur. You're very gay, aren't you? Well, after all, it's an everyday. We have an occasion to... Oh, what's the matter, Arthur? My Princess Elizabeth. Well, have I made a mistake, dear? Did you have to cut those? Well, I thought they'd look lovely for the occasion. I'm sorry. Whiskey, dear? No, thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Effie. Good evening, Mr. Terry. I beg your pardon. Have I said something wrong, sir? You are addressing Dr. Terence Russell. Oh, beg your pardon, Dr. Terry. That's wonderful news. I'm so glad. Congratulations, Terry. I never had the slightest doubt of it. You and Marmaduke did a swell job for me, Mother. Thank you both. Where's Dad? He's in there. Oh. How are you, Will? Hello. Darling. Well, Dad, we made it. Congratulations, son. Thank you, Father. Is something the matter? No, I'm just a bit tired, perhaps. Dinner is served, madam. Thank you, Effie. Well, come along. Dinner. Evening, Mr. Russell. Here's to our honored guest, Dr. Terence Russell. Terry. The first Russell ever to obtain a medical degree. That's logical. He's the first Russell to have me for a mother. <laughs> the thing I love about mother is her modesty. What are your immediate plans, Terry? I'm staying on at the hospital for a while. I couldn't wish for anything better. I hear you've been promoted too, Val. Mm. Yes, he's been made assistant to the professor of biochemistry. Mm, Fifty pounds a year more. That ought to be useful. Yes, perhaps I can save enough to manage a little village chemist shop in my old age. <laughs> With a cosy flat above. Don't forget that, darling. Mm. Which reminds me, would you mind terribly if Fenella and I got married as soon as possible? Well, as soon as we can find a house or something. Or a nice prefab with modern neighbours. But you've been engaged for such a very short time. Long enough these days, isn't it? Short engagement, they say, leads to a long marriage. The only drawback is finding a home. I wonder how many delayed marriages the housing shortage is responsible for. Quite a number, I should think. Well, it needn't delay this one. There's plenty of room in this house. If you and Fenella don't mind living with us. Oh, Daddy, that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it, Val? Oh, yes, it would. But I don't think... Why not? I think it's an excellent idea that Val should join our happy family, Arthur. Well, that's extremely kind of you, Bert. Oh, Mummy. 
That's sweet of you. It's only your happiness I'm thinking of, my darling. Too late for you to get out of it now, Val. You're hooked, good and proper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have coffee sent into the lounge. Off you go, all of you. Jolly good dinner, Mother. Thanks. Good dinner. Oh, by the way, Sylvia, I had some interesting news today. Cable from Austin Penrose. He's coming over from America soon. Austin Penrose? Have I met him? No, I think he'd already gone abroad before we were married. We started together at head office. He's a bright chap, tremendous drive. He's been in charge of our New York office for a number of years. Well, how did he get there? Oh, oh, Austin's the type that nothing can stop. Evidently. Did you say you started off together? Yes, 30 shillings a week, office boys. He must have qualities. He has, he's quite outstanding. Aren't you just a little bit jealous? Jealous of Austin? Why, no, why should I be? Oh, I don't know. I just thought, he seems to have gone such a very long way. Well, I haven't done so badly, considering. Considering what? We can't all be Austin Penrose's. I've no doubt that in those early days, my present position seemed beyond my wildest dreams. After all, we're quite comfortably off, aren't we? Oh, my dear, I wasn't thinking of myself. I was only wondering about you. I know if I'd been a man, I'd have wanted authority. It carries a lot of anxieties and responsibilities. <laughs> Poor Arthur. <laughs> You're not exactly a swashbuckler, are you, dear? <laughs> no, I suppose I'm not. Oh, dear. It was not you to let that dog come in. You're certainly making the most of it, isn't he? Have the coffee in the lunch. Very good, ma'am. Have you finished reading that book I lent you? Not quite, ma'am. I'll hurry up. There's no need to hurry. What do you think of it? There's an awful lot of love in it, isn't there? You ought to like that, at your age. To read about, ma'am. I've found another one. I think you may like it. It's a little bit more difficult, but then that's how progress is made. Thank you, ma'am. Translated from the French. Yes. French are very civilized people. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Russell, is the vet in? Yes, we'll come in. Thank you. Good morning, madam. Good morning. And what's the matter with this little fellow? I want him put to sleep. Oh? Wouldn't you like me to make an examination first? No. Made up your mind, eh? Quite. I see. I only ask because I have had cases of an owner who acted on impulse. I'm not impulsive. Ah. How much? Ten and six. It's essential to get rid of him, for health reasons. I see. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> You're a nice little fella, aren't you? Ace! Carter, boy, where are you? Carter, boy! Ace! Terry! Vanilla, where's the dog? Isn't he in the house? I can't find him. You've seen him, Terry? I've only been in about ten minutes. He's probably snoring in front of the kitchen fire. No! Well, what about Mother? She'll know. She went out just before lunch. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Ace since this morning. You don't think he slipped out? He doesn't usually. That's fine, Mother. Mother? Oh, Mother, where's Ace? What a curious greeting. Have you seen him anywhere, Sylvia? Yes. Oh, thank heaven. I was so afraid he might have been run over. Where is he? I had him put to sleep. You what? Oh, do be quiet, Vanilla. You know I hate hysteria. He... he had an accident. No. He seemed all right this morning. How could he have signaled for anything so quickly? He didn't. Then... I had him destroyed. You had him destroyed? Why? Why, Sylvia? He barked. All dogs bark. Day and night. No, my dear. Day and night. Terry Vanilla race didn't bark over much, did he? No. It's got nothing to do with the children. You don't know what it's been like. You don't know what I've been through. It's more than I can stand with my nerves. 
is not only the noise, it's the restlessness, the food, the runs. Open the door, shut the door, the tyranny of dogs. In and out, in and out, everlastingly. Shut up, mother! Shut up! Festive. Fenella and I ought to have made a double event of it. Save on the flowers. A double event? What do you mean, Terry? Well, if I could have pinned down some unfortunate female in time. Who are you thinking of? The females in the abstract. You're not seriously thinking about of... About getting married? Oh, good heavens, no. Well, you might meet some girl. I have. Hundreds and hundreds. Grade A and substandard, alive and dead, good, bad and totally indifferent. Now, I mean this seriously. Yes, I believe you do. But just because Fenella happens to be lovesick, you needn't be scared it's contagious. I'm not thinking of myself, dear. It's your happiness I want. Yes, you're ambitious, Terry. All your life's ahead of you. Ah, yes. I should miss you bitterly. But I wouldn't stand in your way with any girl you wanted. Only you're clever, Terry, and you've got a future. He travels the fastest who travels alone, hmm? I wouldn't say that, Terry. What about your mother and me? Oh, yes, but Terry's different. He's brilliant and beautiful. You look lovely, my dear. Exquisite. You do all like it. You'll take his breath away. <laughs> do you really think so? No argument. It's to be hoped he'll recover in time to say, I will. <laughs> That'll be Val. But he can't come in here. No, no, no. He's dropped in to give me the lowdown on how to behave as best man. But he mustn't see me. That's all right. We'll head him off. Come on, Dad. You look so sweet. Thank you, Daddy. Sit down, darling. You look so young, so pitifully young. I'm nearly 20. Years, years are nothing. You're so ignorant, so untouched. You make me afraid for you, Fenella. Afraid? Mummy, what do you mean? Perhaps we shouldn't talk about it. About what? Why must I feel like this? Why must my children be so close to me, part of me? I feel everything that happens to them as though it were my own tragedy. Tragedy? Oh, I don't understand. You will. But I'm happy. I've never been so happy in my life. I'm glad to hear you say that. Remember, always remember, that tonight at least you felt like that. Tonight? But after tomorrow, it'll be even better. More secure, more complete. More complete? My poor child. Why poor? Fenella, aren't you afraid? Of what? Of marriage? No, of course not. We love each other. Your love and his. I can't see any difference. Can't you? Aren't there moments when you're alone together, when you feel... I don't know what you're trying to say, but I don't want to hear. Don't you? Don't you want to learn anything? Do you want to plunge into this marriage of yours or the child's ignorance? Mummy, please let me go. I'm tired. Well, I'm off. Good night, Val. Good night, sir. See you tomorrow. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Val, There's I... no need to tell me, Terry. I know. I'm a lucky devil. Yes, you are. I hope you both be very happy. Amen. If you didn't want me to get married, why didn't you say so? Oh, my dear. It isn't that. It's just that I've always looked upon you as a child. Until a few weeks ago, it didn't seem to matter. But, Fenella, I've watched Valentine. I've watched his eyes when he's been looking at you. Don't you understand? No. Oh, my poor child. Fenella, you haven't let what I've said upset you. I don't want to hear any more. I wouldn't have said a word. I only wanted to spare you. Please, Mummy, please. There. Vanella, darling. Don't look at me. Go away. Don't 
too late. I've seen you. And you're the loveliest thing I've ever seen. But... But what? Something's happened to you. What do you mean? I can't explain. It's the look in your eyes. Something odd about you tonight. So you're out of reach. Oh, darling, you're enough to drive any man crazy. Vanilla. Let me go. Let me go. Supposed to be so unlucky to see the bride in her dress. But then I'm not superstitious, are you? I believe only in good luck. Good night. Good night, Valentine. day for me when I see you married. Me too. Tell me, Ma, did Pa propose to you? If I'd waited for your father to propose to me, you'd still be at the starting gate. Oh. <laughs> Johnson. Good morning, Mr. Russell. That's the first train I've missed for years. Well, has Mr. Penrose arrived? Some time ago. The directors met him at the airfield. It was quite a commotion. Oh, was there? Uh, did he ask for me? No. Strange. Does he know you well? My dear Miss Johnson, Mr. Penrose and I are very old friends. Then why not go up to the boardroom and see him? Yes. I think I will. Yes, that's a good idea, Miss Johnson. Oh, and uh, don't bother me unless something urgent crops up. I want your ideas to come back then. Yes, Excellency. Accept the formation of a new friendship with our South American exporter. Believe me, gentlemen, confidence in an old company is far more essential than new ships. I quite agree with you, Penrose. Arthur, my dear fella, how are you? Hello, Austin. Welcome back. Well, well, you haven't changed a bit. Come in. Excuse me, gentlemen. This is Arthur Russell, one of my oldest friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Both joined the old firm together, didn't we? Yes, 30 years ago. A couple of the best little stamp lickers the company ever had. <laughs> well, I expect you two have a lot to say to each other after all these years. We'll go along to the bank. See nice you there. to see you, Mr. Russell. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come and sit down, Arthur, and tell me all about yourself. Well, there's nothing much to tell. I'm still looking after the insurances. I know all about that. I mean the family, that magnificent wife of yours I've heard so much about, and the two children. They're very well. My girl was married recently. My boy Terry is a doctor. Really? That's splendid. You know, sometimes I envy you, Arthur. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Look how you got on. I'm just a stay-at-home stick in the mud. That's just it, old man. Stay-at-home. You know, I envy you that home of yours. I'm not sure you aren't happier than I am. Yes, we're a happy family. Sylvia manages everything beautifully. I'll bet she does. I'm afraid I've been so busy I've neglected that sort of thing. Consequences, I'm often very lonely. Well, you needn't be lonely here, Austin. We'd like you to come to our home. And I'd like to come. In fact, I want to come. <laughs> I'm playing, my dear. Not now, Daddy. You look pale. Mummy said I was off colour. Your mother has sharp eyes. Yes, very sharp. We shall have your husband worrying about you if we're not careful. Val hasn't said anything, has he? Bless you, no. What you need is a holiday by the sea. I sat to talk to Val about it. After all, you haven't been anywhere since your honeymoon. 
I always thought you cut that a bit short. Don, let's go into that again. What a funny girl you are. Most brides were only too eager to discuss a happy time. Was mother? Was she eager to discuss her honeymoon? Well, it's not the sort of thing she'd have mentioned to me, perhaps, but I've no doubt to her own friends. I wonder. My dear, you're trembling. Well, why does everybody put me under a microscope? I can't have a shadow crossing my face without somebody criticizing. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. I know the real trouble. You're restless. Once you get settled in a home of your own, everything will be all right. You don't mind us living here? Nothing could please me more. As for your mother, it's an answer to a prayer. Instead of losing a daughter, why, she's found a son. Fenella, look at me, dear. You are happy? Of course. Perfectly well and very happy. <laughs> on the piano. Fenella, she seems a little upset. Oh. Is that a new dress? Yes. Looks lovely, darling. Mr. Penrose is coming. Of course, why do you ask? Well, after all, it's not a very exciting place for a man like that to come and dine. Oh, Austin would never let an old friend down. Mm. I managed to get along to the wine merchants. I was in luck. New case of Don Pedro had just come in. Ah. Now, what on earth made you bring that? Well, you mentioned it at breakfast. I wrote it down. There we are, Don Pedro. Quite, but it doesn't say sherry, does it? It was their brandy I wanted. I'm sure you said sherry. Oh, your memory. I don't want you to now think... Now, don't let's flog the subject. You've made a mistake. Let's leave it at that. Oh, dear, now we shan't have any liqueur. Who's the creme de menthe? Creme de menthe for a man like Penrose. Never mind. Take it into the kitchen. There's a dear. I suppose it'll do for the trifle. Playing like that. Why shouldn't I? Oh, I no reason. Bell's very late, isn't he? A little. Did he phone? No. He's probably busy at the hospital. You do trust him, don't you? Of course. Why? Oh, nothing. Only oh, men are so odd. After all, we don't know a great deal about him, do we? I mean, what his life was before he married you. Now, what was Terry's name for him? The Brutish Gentleman. This is a lovely expression. It's so apt. I think it's horrible. You're such a sensitive child. You make me worse. Why, darling? You're like someone drawing soothing fingers along an exposed nerve. I see you're wearing your bow. Yes, ma'am, thank you. I don't think I like the way you've got it on. It covers your hair too much. Come here. Too far forward. The hair's very soft, isn't it? A man would like to touch your hair. You're very pretty, aren't you? Anybody else in the house told you that you're pretty? Mrs. Christie said I looked nice in that hat she gave me. No, I don't mean her. I mean any of the men. Master says I'm cheeky. Mr. Terry says I talk too much. And Dr. Christie doesn't know I'm alive. That hurts, doesn't it? Dr. Christie not knowing you're alive. He makes me feel like a worm. Why should you care what he makes you feel? Have I said anything, madam? Oh, quite enough. Run along. Let your mother see you. Yes, madam. And tell her... It was nice of her to come and help us out tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, Mom. Well, you do look a sight. Sight, Ma? Yes, in your lardy da get up. You look like a woman. I am. Madam, give you the outfit? Yes. Well, she never dolled me up like that. No. She do your hair, too. She showed me out. Like it? Well, the men will. 
They'll be after you, all right. I know. I know. Now, look here, my girl. It's all very well for you to be fancy, but mind you, don't be too free. Ah, oh, toujours l'amour. Good evening, sir. Hello. Hello. Where's Vanilla? Oh, I beg your pardon, Val. What did you say? Where's Vanilla? Anything wrong? Oh, no, no. no. I was thinking about Effie. Oh? What about her? I was just wondering whether I should get rid of her. Why? I thought she seemed hard-working enough. She is, and she's strong. She's got all the energy of the peasant in it, isn't there? I'm not sure it's wise with a young son in the house. <laughs> and a young son-in-law, for that matter. Where is Fenella? Lying down. Uh, isn't she well? She's as well as she ever is, poor girl. She lacks vitality. We shall have a cocktail in the lounge when Mr. Penrose arrives. I'd like Fenella to be ready. Evening, darling. You're very late. Mm, a little. Got a free lunch. Where? Giannino's. Why did you go there? Why not? I wouldn't have gone to our place without you. It wasn't my party. Who's then? No one you know. Male or female? Male and female. I see. Oh, no, you don't. Who were they? Alan Travers, my assistant, and a girl called Linda Mason. Was she attractive? I never look over other people's papers. What does that mean? If we must be explicit, after lunch they got married at the registrar's office. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Didn't think it was necessary. Are you sure there were only three of you? My sweet, I may have my limitations, but I can count up to three. You are telling me the truth, aren't you? Vanilla, I believe you're jealous. Why not? You come home late, you say you've been with someone I've never heard of. After all, what do I know about your life? Anything. <laughs> Darling. I think I'm glad you're jealous. I used to be so sure in the beginning. You seem to feel the same as I did about us. But, but from the time we got married, I've had an awful feeling that, well, that you didn't care. Poor Val. When you look at me like that, I believe you do. But every time I try to take you in my arms, you make me feel a brute. A brutish gentleman. Huh? That's only a bit of Teddy's nonsense. Oh, it sounds more like one of your mother's neat little labels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, you're so lovely when you laugh. I'm sorry, Val. But... I don't suppose you can help yourself. You're, you're speaking like a stranger. What are we but strangers? Do you think I haven't watched you? Watched your pitiful attempts to hide the, the disgust in your eyes every time I come near you? Not disgust. Well, fear then, loathing, horror, anything you like. I love you, Fenella. I want so much to make you happy. But I can't stand holding a, a shivering ghost in my arms instead of a woman. Austin, how Hello, nice Arthur. to see you down here. Well, I've come to your home at last. <laughs> now, let's have a drink. What would you like? A sherry? Yes, Don Pedro. Oh, what a nice house this is. Yes, left to Sylvia by an aunt. Rather expensive to run these days. Oh, yes, it is. Well, here's to your first visit. And I sincerely hope it's the first of many. I drink to that. Your health, Arthur. Ah, yes, Sylvia. Darling, this is my old friend, Austin. How do you do, Mrs. Russell? So you're Austin Penrose. I've heard nothing but your achievements for weeks. Don't you believe half of it? I was just saying, what a charming place you've got here. It must seem very dowdy to you, after New York. And I love it. Do you know French, dear? Thank you, darling. Do come and sit down. Thank you. I used to know this part of the world in the old days. It hasn't altered much. 
You know, it's grand to find something so unchanged. But you believe in change, in progress and in success. Clever woman, your wife, Arthur, unmasks me in a sentence. Nothing escapes Sylvia. Yes, I'll admit I'm ambitious, Mrs. Russell. When I went to New York, I said to myself, the sky's the limit. New York must be very stimulating. Overstimulating. A city devoted to the creation of needs and wants and desires. A city to go down the successes and kill off the failures. Oh, well, hardly the place for poor Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why not? Ah, this is Fenella and her husband, Dr. Christie. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Penrose. Dr. Christie, how do you do, sir? But you didn't tell me Fenella was a beauty. Why, she's exquisite. We think so. My one regret in life, not having a daughter. Well, here we are. Has that rich old geezer turned up? Yes, he certainly has. You're Terry, aren't you? Yes, sir. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Your father's been telling me great things about you. Oh, just a manufacturer's pride in his own product. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Benrose, I should like to talk to you sometime about Terry. I believe in him, in his future. I very much like your advice. Well, uh, medicine's not exactly in my line, Mrs. Russell. No, but success is. I suppose there are certain ingredients common to most successes. It's so easy for a man to get into a groove. It seems incredible that you and Arthur should have started off together. <laughs> Poor dear. Arthur's done very well for himself, if you ask me. Lovely daughter, brilliant son, you. What more can a man want? Power. Power's an unknown quantity, Mrs. Russell, like atomic energy, a destroying explosive, or a creative force, according to how it's used. No, on balance, I wouldn't say power was a desirable factor in life. Well, no one fully realizes the value of a thing if they've never had it. I haven't got power. Authority, yes, a certain amount of authority, but not power. Authority is power. I envy you that. I'd have enjoyed power. It's okay. Thank you. You're not afraid of me, are you? Afraid? No, why? I think you are. Just a little. Hmm. You're a successful man. Do you believe in magnetism? You mean a dominant personality? Mm, you can call it that. It's the basis of all leadership. Some women are dominant, too. <laughs> my field has been so limited. It's just the family. They certainly do your credit. But I've always tried to inspire my children, Terry in particular. Very lucky to have such a mother. Mm. I'm surprised you never married. I was rather keen on a very beautiful girl once. I guess I was too busy to pursue it. <laughs> she was lovely, though. Well, of course, there are qualities of the mind. There's character, strength, <laughs> inspiration. But I'm more enduring. You know, Sylvia, meeting you has been one of those random experiences in life that turn out to have an unexpected significance. How, Austin? Well, your home life has given me a glimpse of something I'd almost forgotten existed. Stability, contentment, affection. I can't tell you what it's meant to me. Having you with us has meant a great deal to me, Austin. You're very quiet, Fenella. I'm afraid this evening's been rather boring for you. Not at all, Mr. Penrose. I just have a bit of a headache. Oh, my dear, I'm sorry. We'll take her home at once. Well, of course, darling. I don't want to spoil your evening. You haven't. I wouldn't dream of keeping you here if you're not feeling well. <laughs> what a pity Val couldn't come. You knew he was busy. I know you said so. What are you doing in here, stretched out like that? Madam said I could. Did she? Ah, it's hot everywhere tonight. It's midsummer night. Ah. Is that what it is? Yes, that's what it is. What have you been doing to yourself? Nothing. You look different. Without my cap? Oh, yes, that's it. Your hair. Madam says it's nice and soft. What's that tune on the wireless? I don't know. Why? Just wondered what it was, that's all. What do you want with music? Don't you want music? No. Why not? What are you smiling at? Was I? Is your face so out of control you don't know whether you're smiling or not? Perhaps it's the moon and the music. Effie, have you been mucking about with my medical books? Oh, no, Mr. Teddy. I find them very dull. 
Well, one of them's missing, an important one, brown binding. Well, I... Oh, was it something about clinic or something? Yes. Where is it? Madam had it. Mother? Yes. She was looking at it early this morning in the summer house. Oh, what an extraordinary taste in literature my mother has. Mm. And what an extraordinary taste in perfume you have. Here, Val, you're more expert than I am. Hmm, obviously. Fader. Where would you get Fader perfume? Madam gave me a bottle. What on earth for? My birthday, sir. I'm 18. Sweetly pretty the perfume is. In a little drawer with a tassel to pull it open with. Let's get some fresh air. Yeah. What have you got there, Mrs. Beaton? No. Why do I get thee behind me? No particular reason. Let me see it then. Come on. Why, you dirty little cat. I... Unexpurgated at that. Do you mean to say you read this sort of stuff? Can you make head or tail of it? Not all, sir. Where did you get hold of it? Madam lent it to me. What? Mother? I tell you, it's true, sir. She's lent me lots and lots of books. All like this? No, the others were easier. Not so dull, you might say. Dull? You're pretty blase, aren't you? You'd better get out of bed. The book, sir. Good night. You know, that girl has a most extraordinary combination of, of childishness and... Uh, and what? And... Oh, skip it. What are you talking about, though? The brutish gentleman is in danger of becoming more brute than gentleman. I suppose that's your pat little analysis, hmm? I don't get it. I must be an interesting case for the embryo psychoanalyst. Man, watch the ape beneath the thin skin of civilization. You must have fun in your family. My family? Yes, Terry, you and your mother. She's a bit better at it than you are. Her knowledge is more instinctive. Her mind isn't so cluttered up with labels as yours. She watches. She watches for the symptoms of degeneration. Why so bitter, then? Is it Fenella? Leave her out of it. Come in and have a drink with us before you go, Austin. Thank you, Tilbert. I think I'll be getting along. Good night, Mr. Penrose. Thank you so much, and I'm sorry I wasn't quite myself. I'm sorry, too. Good night, my dear. Good night. Good night, Austin. And as usual with you, I've enjoyed myself enormously. So have I. Good night. Good night. Hello, Fenella. I'm going upstairs, Val. Good night. No, darling, please. No. Fenella. I'm worried, Val. What about? You two. We're all right. No, you're not. All right, then. We're not. Why are you so on the defensive with me? I'd rather not rake over dead ashes. Dead ashes? Is it as serious as all that? Serious? I haven't kissed her, hardly even touched her hand for weeks. Why not? Because I'm a coward. I can't face the look in her eyes. I can't face the knowledge that she hates me. This is what I've been afraid of, Val, and I must be frank with you. I feel so terribly to blame. In what way? I ought never to have let you marry. Why not? Fenella is not meant for marriage. She's too sensitive, too highly strung, hysterical almost. And when she fell in love with you, I hoped she'd alter. But if anything, marriage has intensified her abnormality. If only I could help you both. It's up to us to work out something. No one can help us. Breaks my heart. I do love you both so much. I'm sorry for Fenella, of course, but I'm much sorrier for you. After all, you're a man. I'm going out in the garden for a bit. Stifling in here. It's midsummer night. She said that. Who? Effie. Ah, I warned you about her. Oh, you're not suggesting that... Certainly not. Only girls like Effie are fair game. And they consider men like you a prize. Just you watch her. See how she looks at you the next time. You're an attractive young brute, well. Huh. Nice to know someone thinks so. Mother. Oh, Terry, you should have been with us this evening. This boy was wonderful. What on earth made you lend that Chatterley book to Effie? What? Surely not. She said you did. Did she? Oh. 
How awful of me. <laughs> it must have been the similarity of bindings that confused me, and I, I was in such a hurry. Well, never mind. I don't suppose she understood it. She understood enough. Well, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. And incidentally, Mother, where's that book of mine you borrowed? Yours? Yes, on clinical toxicology. Who says I borrowed such a book? Effie said you were reading it in the summer house this morning. My child's crazy. I wasn't in the summer house this morning. Good night, Effie. What are you doing out here? Oh, I came to lock up, sir. Beautiful moon, isn't it? Yes. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank. Lovely speech. Always has been. You're romantic, aren't you? Does it matter? To me, it does. You knew I was out here, didn't you? Why'd you come? I told you. To lock up. You do look different with your hair loose. Do I? Yes. It's pretty. I'm glad you like it. Beautiful hair, Effie. Oh, I do love you. I've always loved you. Say that again. I love you. Oh, you're sweet and warm and lovely. I must have been crazy. She was right then. She was right. Who? Mother. Darling, you must... Don't come near me. Don't ever come near me again. Wait, darling. Wait, please. Darling. Look. Now leave me alone. Let me go. Here. What's happening? What's all around? Oh, dear. I wouldn't believe her. I wouldn't listen to mother. Mother? Darling, I know it's stupid to try to explain. But you must realize that girl could never be. Val, you better go. I'm sorry, Fenella. I thought I heard someone crying. You did. Why? What's happened? I think you know. What's wrong? No, Mother. What's the matter? Has something hurt her? No. Tell me, darling. Talk to me. I don't understand. Leave her alone. You've done enough damage for one night. How dare you speak to me like that? Yeah? Mrs. Russell to see you, Mr. Penrose. Oh. oh. Ask her to come in. Mrs. Russell, Mr. Penrose. Hello, Austin. 
Sylvia, my dear, what a pleasant surprise. How charming you look. Thank you. Come and sit down. Well, now. Oh, Stephen, you once said you'd do anything for me if I asked. Well, of course. What is it? Well, there is something. Something for Arthur? I wouldn't ask for that. No, it's for Terry and Fenella. Terry wants to embark on a career as a brain specialist. Well, I do feel that before he starts, he should have a break. Would it... Would it be possible for you to get him on one of your liners as a ship's doctor? And Fenella? She's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And I can't think of anything better for her than a long sea voyage under the care of her brother. I'd be only too glad to arrange it. It's the best thing for both of them. Oh, thank you, Austin. That is kind of you. Not at all. A ship's a good cure for most things. You love ships, don't you? Yes, they've always fascinated me. Where they come from, where they're off to, what they carry. Oh, but this must be old stuff to you. I mean, Arthur's in the same firm. Arthur's horizon is bounded by glass doors, not oceans. But surely he talked to you about his work. Oh, yes. He talks about things. Things typed on bits of paper, insurances, little anecdotes. Mr. Smith has been transferred to the Liverpool office. We shall seriously have to consider getting rid of Miss Jones. Miss Jones' tram from Brixton was half an hour late this morning. Not for mail boat from Panama. A new package of stationery has just arrived from Straker's. Not a consignment of nitrates from Chile. <laughs> Romance of shipping. You don't know what it's like, Austin. This feeling of frustration, this mediocrity. Everything I touch. Knowing what I might have been. What I could have accomplished. With the right man. I think I understand, Sylvia. I understand now your need for sublimation. Thank you, Austin. <laughs> Well, Fen, we've left England behind. There's only the horizon now. Yes. Even a few moments ago, there was something. Now, quite suddenly, there's nothing. Do you suppose memories can disappear as easily as that? Not as easily, perhaps. But just as surely, if one tries. We'll put them in the sterilizer and examine them again in a fortnight under polarized light. Yeah. Hello, Val. Oh, hello, Sally. Any news from Fenella? No. Not a word. Look. Oh. From Terry. Mm, from Panama. Hello, Sally. Had an exciting time removing gallstones from third mate. He is still alive. Hope you are the same, Terry. Romantic, isn't it? From Terry, yes. I suppose if you'd put kind regards, you'd have taken that as a proposal. Perhaps. You see, Terry's not very demonstrative. But then, I understand him. I understand his soul. And does he understand yours? Of course he does. I seem to have been well forgotten by both of them. I don't think by either, though. <laughs> Ben? Yes? You left your things on the chair. Thanks, Terry. What's wrong? Nothing. Why do you always look at me as though you're trying to find out something? I am. What? Why you drove Val into that girl's arms? Terry, I'd rather not... I know, I know. But you can't go on like this the whole voyage. You're getting worse, not better. I'm fine, Terry. Having a wonderful time. Don't lie, Penella. There's something behind all this. Something more than grief over Val. Oh, I know he was dead wrong that night. But I'm sure he wouldn't have done a thing like that without cause. I'm just as sure he would. Men are animals, mostly. They're no different from women. It just happens to be our lot to be aggressive. 
and unfaithful. Val's in love with you, Fenella. No, Terry, he's never been in love with me. To him, I was just a woman. Look, darling, you're sick, sick in your mind. If you go on drifting indefinitely, you'll develop into a morbid borderline case. Oh, don't look so startled, my dear. I don't mean you're going crazy. But you can't go on brooding and brooding until the thing becomes an obsession. Fen, we've always shared each other's confidence. What is it that's bothering you? What are you fighting? What is it you're trying to hide? Oh, Terry, help me. I want to forget. Something Mother said? Yes. Before the wedding? The night before. Mother came to me, started to talk strangely. Her eyes were weird, almost hypnotic. Refreshments. Well, Fen, in two days you'll see England again. Yes. How do you think your patient's doing, Doctor? I'd say improving steadily. You've been marvelous, Terry. Rot. You're a very interesting case. Probably the turning point in my career. Huh. Oh, I'm not fooling, I mean it. I've dabbled in psychoanalysis before, but never deep enough to show results. You're my first case. That's why it's up to you not to let the side down. I won't. To my favorite doctor. And to our indomitable mother. And to dad. To dad. Yes, Austin? Arthur, I've good news for you. Terry and Fenella arrive tomorrow. Caribou docks late afternoon. Oh, thank you, Austin. That is good. Yeah. Arthur. Arthur, are you there? Arthur, are you all right? What well, strange. Come with me, Miss Thomas. Arthur, I mean, what's happened? Uh, oh, I'm afraid I've had another attack. Stupid of me. Get my car right away. Yes, sir. What about your appointments? Cancel them. Yes. That's very good of you, Austin. I'll get in touch with Dr. Morrison right away. What? They're coming tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Austin. Yes, I, I am glad. Goodbye.
I can't believe we're back home again after all these months, can you, Terry? No. Hello, my lady. Hello, Nella. A darling. And Terry. Well, dear? Well, let me look at you both. How fit you look. Had a nice trip? Glorious. Terrific. Gallstones, kidney stones, two appendix, three broken legs. And a stubborn mental case. What? And he cured them all. I tell you, Mother, we have a wonderful doctor in the family. <laughs> my sister, so young. She plays a fair game of deck tennis, sir. Goodness, Mother, the house looks gloomy. Why not a fire and some flowers to brighten the old place up a bit? Yes, it needs it. Where's Dad? How is he? He's not so well, I'm afraid. What? I'm glad you snatched your happiness while you could. There's little enough for you to come home to, heaven knows. What do you mean? What's the matter with Dad? Well, that's just the distracting part. Dr. Morrison isn't certain. Morrison? That old leech? He's a very experienced man, Terry. He's been attending your father since before you were born. Well, that's years too long. He must have some idea, though. What does he think it is? Well, first of all, he diagnosed gastric trouble, and then he thought it might be an ulcer. Has he had him x-rayed? X-rayed? No. No, your father's been much too ill. Too ill? Ridiculous. Wait, Terry. Dr. Morrison is with him now. All the better. But wouldn't it be unprofessional? I mean, another doctor's patient. Isn't there some sort of etiquette? Etiquette be blow. Mother, is he really bad? I... I... I'm afraid you'll both have rather a shock. You should have sent for me. But, Teddy, he was in good hands. I wonder. What do you mean by that? I haven't much faith in Morrison. <sighs> Dear, you young people are so intolerant. Be patient now. Dr. Morrison won't be long. Mother seems very worried about Daddy. Very. Oh, this room, this house brings it all back. It's like a spider's web. A lot of subtle threads tangling you up. Oh, Terry, I'm frightened. Now, Fen, no slipping back. I'm afraid of Mother. She's so strong, has such influence, such power. She seems more strange than ever. Oh, Dr. Morris. Hello, Terry. What about my father? What is it? Well, at first I thought gastroenteritis. All the symptoms seem to point to it, but no, I'm not sure. Not sure? Well, the pulse has fallen to be almost imperceptible. Severe cramp has set in the muscles, and there's a pronounced drop in the blood pressure. Have you had another opinion? Yeah? No. I'll ask Dr. Carter to come along in the morning. Where's mother? I'm here, dear. Good. She's been so... so good.
Well, Terry? I don't like it. When did he have his first attack? Some time ago. Hmm. I think it was shortly after you left England. It started quite mildly, but recently they've been more frequent and more severe. Why didn't you send for me? Your mother wanted to spare you both. You don't go through years of hospital training without a few shocks, Mr. Penry. Different when it's your own family, Terry. Isn't that all the more reason for wanting to do something for him? I feel a little guilty myself. I've offered repeatedly to get a specialist, but your mother seems to have such faith in Dr. Morrison. She's been magnificent, Terry. Won't dream of having anyone to help her. Never spares herself day or night. She's, she's like a woman inspired. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get Dad to hospital right away. Hello? Fenella, you should send your mother to bed. Point. She must have rest. Sorry. You know, she's been with your father since yesterday afternoon. She won't move. I've tried to get her to rest. She never takes her eyes off him. Just sits crouched by his side. Doesn't seem to hear what you say. It's as though she's in a trance. Only her eyes are alive. There's something terrible about such vigilance. As though she's waiting. Longer. I'll get you a drink. You are, Fenella. Thank you. I, um, I saw Val while you were away. Really? Yes. Came to my office several times. Wanted to follow your route. How did he seem? Most unhappy. I think he's still very much in love with you, Fenella. The ambulance will be here in an hour. Good. What is wrong with Daddy Terry? I don't know. I don't know. Morrison's not the only fool in the medical profession. I'm as baffled as he is. Some cases baffle the best brains in the country, Terry. Yes. But you see, I'm smart. I've got a future. And I can't even diagnose what's wrong with my own father in time to save his life. Terry! Terry! He's gone. Poor Daddy. He certainly had a lot of friends, didn't he? Yes. I hope I'm lucky enough to have half as many. Mm. Hello? Yes? Oh. I understand. Yes. Yes. Very well. I'll tell her. Who was that? Message from Mr. Penrose's office, saying he might be a little late. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that Penrose was coming here today. Nor did I, Mother. Oh, he just wants to talk to me. It's about your father's affairs. Aren't you going to the hospital match this afternoon, Terry? What? Of course not, Mother. Well, I think you should, dear. And take Fenella with you. Mother, we couldn't possibly do that. My dears, you mustn't brood. I haven't been outside this house for a week. You know your father wouldn't have wished that. After all, life must go on. If you don't want to go to the match, why don't you go to the cinema? Nobody would see you there. What people would see, Mother, is not exactly the point. Hello? Val, coming here? Yes. Oh, but I can't see him. Why not? He's still your husband, isn't he? Yes, I... Penella. Yes. Oh, but Terry, I... My dears, we must all forget the past. Terry, what shall I do? How do you face? 
Terry. Hmm? Why do you think Mother acted so strangely about Mr. Penrose? About wanting us to go out, and now about Belle? I wonder. Sometimes, I feel she's trying to hide something from us. How do I? thought I'd bring these. Oh, how kind of you. Didn't expect to see anyone except the housekeeper. We haven't one. Uh, Won't you come in? Thanks. Is Terry around? Oh, he's somewhere. I'll call him. Oh, no hurry. I just thought I'd say hello. These flowers are beautiful. Oh. You, uh, you have a good voice? Lovely, thanks. How is the Panama Canal? Narrow. Very narrow. Yes, of course it would be. You're looking well, Fenella. Different. More glowing. How have you been, Val? Pretty wretched. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say anything real. Oh, Fenella, those flowers are a swindle. I only brought them because I thought I might catch a glimpse of you. No good seeing each other. You must know that. It's only hurting us both. Surely we can be friends. Too much has happened, Val. Then suppose we were lovers again. Oh, Val. Fenella, darling, I've thought of you incessantly. I've followed you on your voyage, every sea, every port. I've been with you all the time, looking over your shoulder. Oh, Val, take me away. Take me away quickly, away from this house, from Mother, from everything. Yes, darling. Come to the hospital with me at once. I can't do that, Terry. I'm taking Penella away. That's fine, but this is more important. What is it? What? Never mind now. I'll tell you later. Come on. something here. Arsenic. Enough to kill? Easily a fatal dose. Fool. Fool. Why didn't I recognize the symptoms? Val. I'd like you to have an official report made on your findings. Official report? Yes. What are you going to do? The only thing one can do. What do you mean? Don't you realize it was murder? Yes. Oh, Steve. Hello, Silva. I'm so glad you came. Well, your miss, it sounded urgent. I'm awfully sorry I'm late. That doesn't matter. Shall we go and talk in my sitting room? Yes. It's much more comfortable. How are you, Sylvia? Oh, I'm all right, Austin. And the children? They're very well. They're out this evening with Val. Oh? He and Fenella are 
back together again? Really, I am pleased. Here we are. I say, Sylvia, you have made it comfortable in here. Yes. This is my haven, where I build my castles. I love to shut the world out. It gives one a curious sense of intimacy. Thank you. Do sit down, Austin. Well, now, how can I help you? I wanted to see you about us. Oh, of course, my dear. Poor Arthur's going won't make any difference to our friendship. I hope you'll let me come here just the same, let me help you and the children. <laughs> There's no one listening. Listening? Yes. You don't have to pretend anymore. We're alone in the house. But I don't quite understand. Oh, yes, you do. You're not a child, neither am I. We both know what we want. We're strong, we saluted the strength in each other from the start. But I'm the stronger. My courage is greater than yours. Forgive me, Sylvia, I still can't follow your line of thought. Oh, yes, you can. I can see that by the fear in your eyes. Fear? Yes. You needn't try to evade my eyes. I know their power. Oh, I know I'm not young. I'm not beautiful. But beauty isn't important. It's ephemeral, insipid. Please, Sylvia. I really don't understand you. We'll talk another day. I'll come back when you're yourself again. I am myself. Don't be such a coward. You want me. You've wanted me from the very beginning. And I want you. But, Sylvia, to me, you've never been anything but my friend's wife. You're lying to yourself, not me. Very well. I hope to avoid the truth. But since you force me, I must tell you that I do understand. The truth is unforgivably hurting. Arthur was my friend. <sighs> that mediocrity. Mediocrity? He was a real person. That's why I was so fond of him. But you came here for me. And the others. Until I met you, I never believed friendship between man and a woman possible. I found it was. You were a stimulating companion. You... You wanted me. My dear Sylvia, if I'd wanted you, I should either have taken you or stopped coming here. You're lying! I assure you I'm not. Don't want me. No, my dear. I'd have spared you all this if I could. Please go. Hello, Terry. Mother in her room? Yes. Thanks. What are you looking at? Probably the most extraordinary woman I shall ever look at. Terry, whatever is the matter with you? Since you came back, you've been different, so neurotic. You're not going the same way as Fenella, are you? No. I'm too strong for you. What do you want? To talk to you about yourself. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Why do you say that? You're an interesting subject, Mother. A study in ultimate egotism. You're trying to psychoanalyze me. Oh, how funny. How funny. As if you could. I'm not beginning on you, Mother. I believe I've finished. You think you know me? Yes, I do. You read me superficially, like fortune in a teacup, according to certain universal laws. And... Suppose I tell you what I see. Go on. I see first a facade, the animated waxwork of a devoted wife and mother, the kind mistress, the sympathetic friend, then the undercurrent, the brilliant woman stifled by mediocrities, 
frustrated, seeking sublimation or outlet, the power behind the throne, influencing the people with whom she comes into contact. How far wrong am I so far? I had no idea you understood me so well. Now the experiments, the humiliation you inflicted on Dad in small things, the books, the wine, the roses, the subtle breaking down of his confidence in himself, then his dog. You didn't really mind his barking, you've got nerves of steel. You were fond of Ace, but he happened to mean something to Dad, so he had to go. I don't want to hear him. I'm afraid you've got to, Mother. You're my son, all right. You've got my will. That was your first essay in power. It gave you a taste for it. Then there was Effie. I only tried to educate the girl. Make her a little less uncouth. You succeeded admirably. You taught her the subtleties where most of her kind only learned the elementaries. Oh. Your work on Fenella was highly successful too. Then you went too far. What do you mean? The trouble with power is that it's insatiable like blackmail or a habit-forming drug. Fenella, Val, Effie. When were you going to start on me? You. I worship you. you. You talk of sublimation. You've been my sublimation. I've lived through you. Sadists get their keenest pleasure out of those they love. You were waiting till some girl came into my life. Do you know that every woman I've known, I've found myself watching through your eyes? That's why I never brought Sally here. Because I wondered what treatment you would devise for her in order to inflict the maximum amount of pain on me. Sally, why are you saying all these things Because to me? they're true. You'd almost broken Dad's spirit, but not quite. He wasn't much fun. He suffered too silently. Then Penrose came into your life. Penrose had nothing to do with it. Indeed, he did a great deal more than he himself realized. You used him to get Fenella and me out of your way. Then Dad was alone with you. Alone in this house, night after night. Well, what of it? When you took my medical book on poisons last summer, I thought it a rather intelligent depravity. It was deliberate premeditation, wasn't it? What are you implying? Murder. <laughs> the medicine you gave Dad contained arsenic. Oh, no, no, Terry, you're making a mistake. A terrible mistake. You made the mistake when you failed to destroy the medicine bottle. While we were away, you were very subtle. You handled things very cleverly, but you're just a bit too slow. When you learned I was coming home, you realized the danger of my finding out and being able to save him. So you had to hurry, and that made you clumsy, didn't it? Didn't it? Candace, the chemist must have made a mistake. Sure, surely we can prove it. He, he blundered. Don't lie, Mother. It's unworthy of you. You're trying to trap me. Why should I? You're trapped anyway. Terry, why are you torturing me? What was your motive for murdering Father? I'm not a policeman. I'm your son. Tell me. What was your motive? Suppression. The denial of an emotional outlet. The frustration of a desire that's born in every woman's soul. Are you trying to justify murder? No. Only stating the cause. The cause was Penrose. No, no, no. He was merely the means to an end. Better clay for me to mould than the petty shipping clerk. Most men are despicable, cowardly mediocrities. It's the women behind them who've made them great. Women have the seed of greatness in them. They know what's in a man's mind because they plant it. You. There's nothing in you that hasn't sprung from me. Nothing. You think that I love Penrose? Yes. No. But with him, I could have realized my ambitions. I could have had power. Power? Yes. I love power. And I got it. The supreme power. Power over life and death. I watched him day after day, and I thought, if I like, you may live. Sometimes I stopped his doses. He thought he was getting better. But it was in my hands, his life, mine, to give or to take Stop. away. Stop! Stop! I've heard enough! You can't even stand hearing. Yet I could see and I could watch and watch and watch. You think I'm mad, don't you? I know you're not mad. You're just evil. All the time you were making your study in power, you were busy with your role of devoted wife. You'd have gone on lying if I hadn't tripped you up, if I hadn't found the poison. Well? What are you going to do? Have me hanged? Oh, no. You won't be let off so quickly. Not so easily. I know you're not mad. But your judge won't. You'll spend the rest of your life in solitude. You're not old. You'll have plenty of time to think. Years. And no power to get away. No more power. And nobody to experiment on.
police. Yes. You're afraid, aren't you? Afraid for the first time in your life. Afraid of your own thoughts. Of the quiet. No, I'm not afraid. Give my love to Sally. 